In today's video I'm going to experiment with growing dandelion microgreens. So we've got a small pot of dandelion seeds here and I'm going to try to grow microgreens. Now I don't know about you but I think microgreens is a bit of a pretentious term. It's something that pops up on MasterChef a lot, sort of like this. Michael is serving a seared sous vide duck breast, duck parfait bonbon with toasted quinoa and wild grain crumb compressed celeriac discs with a pomegranate and golden beetroot reduction, lotus flower and porcini foam, and a duck skin and parmesan twill, dressed with dandelion microgreens. So in a nutshell, actually, what we're going to do here is sprout these seeds like we would with mustard or cress, and we're just going to grow them until they're small plants and then eat them in that state. Got a bit of a technique for gathering these dandelion seeds. So when you find dandelions in seed like I did here, all you need to do is actually just grab the fluff and the seeds as one handful, shove it in a bag, keep on doing that until you've got a bag full of fluff and seeds. Then find somewhere, ideally away from your own garden, to sit down and just massage the, the mass of fluff and seeds inside the bag. What you'll be doing there is breaking off the seeds from their little fluffy parachutes. Then shaking the bag causes the seeds to settle down to the bottom and you can just grab handfuls of the fluff and discard it. It's still got a few seeds in it but we're outdoors. We're somewhere where it's okay for dandelions to grow. So I'm just going to discard that fluff. I'm kind of doing nature a helping hand here by distributing seeds. So I've cleaned these seeds as much as I can of fluff, but I'm just going to give them a little rinse. So I'm just going to put them in a tea strainer, run them under the tap. And that'll just remove any dust or small pieces of fluff and particles that might have been on there. We'll have all of those seeds out into this plastic container. Add a little bit more water. Right, there's my dandelion seeds. I've tipped off most of the water and they've soaked up some of it. I'm actually going to separate them, I think. I'll split this in half. We'll grow half on paper and we'll grow half like this and we'll see what the difference is like. Growing them on paper might make them difficult to actually harvest the tiny leaves when they're ready. But anyway, we'll split this in half. We'll grow half like this, just wet seeds. The other half, wet seeds on wet paper. In fact, I think we might split them into three batches. We'll do wet seeds on wet paper in the dark. We'll do wet seeds on their own in the dark. Then I'll do one that I leave exposed to the light so we can see the difference. Growing them on paper, of course, does make watering a whole lot easier because the seeds will stick to the paper. You can just add a little bit of water and then pour off the excess. Whereas where we're growing them loose here, not so easy to pour off the water. It is possible you do a kind of similar process to gold panning essentially. There's the three containers. These two are going to go in a dark cupboard. That one I'm going to put on a non-sunny windowsill. It's not going to be in direct sunlight but it will get plenty of light. And all of these I'm only closing three corners of the box and the, the, th the fourth corner is going to be left sticking up so that air can diffuse in. We're about four days into the dandelion microgreens experiment and I've got different results in all three of these batches. So let's have a look at them from worst to best. These have been grown in the dark with no substrate at all. So I, these are the ones I kind of hoped would grow into sweet shoots but wouldn't have any paper stuck to them. That hasn't worked. In fact, I think what's happening here, I don't know if, I don't know if that fluffy stuff is roots or if it's mold but it's not really working. These are ones grown in the dark on paper and a little bit better. And again, I don't know if that fluffy bit there is roots or what it is. It might be just fibrous roots, but it hasn't really been a great success for germination. There's probably only about 5% of the seeds have germinated, which tells me that dandelion seeds probably need light to germinate properly. And whilst growing them in the dark like this blanches them and may make them longer and sweeter and more tender, I actually think there's probably not enough energy in these seeds, like there is with cress or something like that, or mung beans, to be able to actually grow a substantial shoot from that tiny seed. And this is the batch. This was grown on the windowsill. Not in sunlight, but in bright indirect daylight. And they're doing really well. So I think this is the one that's going to go forward. I think I'm probably just going to discard these two and give up on them. But this batch here, I'm going to carry on watering them. And I think we'll grow them for another probably four or five days. But there we go. That's what they look like at day four. Quite promising in this little batch. 
And what I'm doing here, I'm just leaving one corner of the lid open so that we don't get mould growing in there. And I'll just water that every day. The time has come to try out my dandelion microgreens. And they're never going to get as tall as cress or mustard, but there's still enough there that I can cut some little leaves and have them in my sandwich. So it's a very nice lush little forest of mini dandelions. So I'm going to make a sandwich with these and bacon and tomato and possibly blue cheese. I don't know. That might be too many flavours. But first, I think we should just taste one of these on its own. Just going to snip one out. It's really not an awful lot to them. Look at that. That's a tiny little thing. Anyway, let's give that a taste. I expected that to be a little bit bitter. And so there's a tiny, tiny little bit of bitterness in there, but mostly it's just green and leafy like lettuce would be. So I think this will actually be a brilliant substitute for lettuce in a bacon, lettuce and tomato sandwich. So I've got a couple of slices of really nice bread. Now, some people like to butter their bread for bacon sandwiches. I find that a bit strange, actually putting butter on something that's already quite fatty. But perhaps this bread's a little dry on its own. So let's take it for a little tour around the frying pan. So we can just give that bread a little swirl around the pan like that and pick up some of that lovely bacon fat. Now, I did say it was weird to add fat to something that's already got fat, but now I'm just going to contradict myself. And on one of these slices, I'm going to spread mayonnaise. And that's where my dandelion salad's going to go on that side. And that will help those dandelion greens, which are tiny, not to fall out right out of the sandwich. On the other slice, I've got some sriracha. So I'll just dab a little bit of that on there. Not trying to be too even. I've cooked the bacon a little more crisp than I would normally cook bacon, but I think in a sandwich like this, it kind of wants to be. We'll have a few really nice thin slices of tomato. And now, the kind of star of the show, the dandelion microgreens. And to get these onto my sandwich, all I'm going to do is hold the paper that I've grown them on and snip them directly down onto there. I think if I was to try to pick them off any other way, I'd either get lots of paper or I would just completely lose them in the process. Bear in mind that these have been washed by the watering process. So when I watered these, I immersed them in water and then drained off the excess. Now this is a lot of faff and effort for essentially one sandwich, but it's an experiment. Right, that's that. Now those dandelion microgreens are stuck on that mayonnaise, I can just flop that over just briefly transfer it to a board and then because video thumbnails are a thing cut some on there from a height so that they kind of sprinkle on right so there it is bacon and tomato sandwich with sriracha and dandelion microgreens tasting time just so that i can experiment a little bit more i've got this blue cheese called castello it's one of my favorite cheeses actually it's probably my favorite blue cheese it's like a soft cheese a bit like uh, camembert but with lots and lots of blue marbling in it. It's very, very buttery and creamy and rich. It's a bit like a gorgonzola, but even softer and richer than that. So I'll just have a little bit of that on the side and I can taste it with and without. Okay, moment of truth then for my dandelion microgreens. Here we go. You might think these tiny little leaves would be completely lost in there, but they're not. The predominant flavour note is bitter, but it's bitter like chicory. So it's it's kind of like a really nice balancing flavour for the sweetness and spiciness of the sauce, the salty umami of the bacon and tomatoes. And yeah, it's just a really nice little flavour note in there that I think enhances this sandwich more than lettuce would. Hmm. I'm pleasantly surprised with how well those dandelions keep up with the other flavours in the sandwich. Okay, so now the question, does adding blue cheese to this sandwich improve or take away? Because there's already quite a lot of flavours in there, and if you add another strong flavour, sometimes that can just overwhelm it or kind of muddy the whole blend. So, is that going to be better or worse? Well, that's nice, but because blue cheese has got a little bit of a bitterness to it anyway, that's kind of overwhelmed the dandelions. I can't taste the dandelions now. I can taste the blue cheese, which is really nice, and I like blue cheese. But yeah, adding that blue cheese in there has 
swamped the subtle bitterness of the dandelions. So there we go, dandelion microgreens. Was that practical or productive? Not really. Was that interesting? Absolutely. That was a really interesting and fun experiment. Not probably something I'm going to do all the time, but actually when the dandelions are all going to seed in spring, not that hard to gather a little egg cup full of dandelion seeds and sprout them on a piece of paper in a tray. And it's interesting, and I do like interesting. I hope you found that interesting too. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.